But we're glad that you're here with us today. And you just uh, make yourself home and get a blessing. Um, here in Joshua chapter 22, I want to look at verse number 25 and uh, look at the, the, the warning that God gave His people as they were coming into this land. And I'm going to talk about kids today, little kids and teenagers. So if you are a parent here this morning, you have a baby, a toddler, or teenagers, that's the message is mainly to you and for you. Parents of teenagers, toddlers, babies. Uh, sad what we're seeing today, uh, kids being the way they're being treated. Here in Joshua 22, look at verse 25. For the Lord hath made Jordan a border between us and you, ye children of Reuben and children of Gad. Ye have no part in the Lord. So shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. Therefore we said, let us now prepare to build us an altar not for burnt offering or for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generations after us that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings that your children may not say to our children in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. Look at that back there in verse 25. Amazing. We're going to build a wall we're going to separate from you. The bottom part of verse 25 said, so that your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. You know what them people are saying? They're saying, look, we're going to have to distance ourselves from you a little bit because your kids, y'all worship the wrong God, you do all kind of crazy stuff, and your kids will influence our kids to do that. Isn't that something? My goodness. You're, you're called mean and ugly and mean, self-righteous if you do that now. But in the Bible, they were saying, look, I cannot allow my kids to hang out, run around with, sleepovers, be with ki other kids that will teach my kids to worship other gods. And that's Christianity 101, people. Number one. Listen, all you, there has never ever in history been a time when it's harder to be a parent of a child than it is now in this country. Never. I mean, I've been, I've been one good night. I'm, I've, got, I, I, I've been parents. Long. I've had kids in school 40 years nearly and, one got, and got one in kindergarten right now. Can you believe that? Uh, people think that's crazy, but I, I wouldn't trade for nothing in the world. I wouldn't trade places with nobody in the world. I wouldn't trade my life for nobody in the world. But kids are special. Kids are very special. Kids are an heritage of the Lord. If God has given you a child or two children or three children or four children, God has blessed you with a great favor, a great favor. There's nothing in the world like, like kids. They, they're, 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 they're amazing. Uh, your, your kid is a mixture of mama and daddy and then its own little personality. Actually, they say by the time a child is four years old, a big part of their personality has already been born for life. That's what they say. That's hard for me to believe that, but that, that's what I've read statistically. And we are we're living in, in a time when guys had, this one guy, he said he's an expert on raising kids, and he wrote a book called Ten Commandments for Parents, Raising Kids. And then he got married. And had one, and a few years later he wrote a he wrote a book called Ten Rules for Parents to Go By Raising Their Kid. Then he had another kid uh, or two, and he put out another book called Ten Suggestions uh, for Parents. And uh, you know what he's learning? He's learning the more I do this, the less I'm I know what I'm doing. That's right, buddy. Yeah, you think you're an expert on raising kids? You you ain't even made first grade yet. Uh, and, and I tell you something about kids; they're all so different. 
Sometimes you check, you better check that DNA, man. He couldn't be his brother or, or, their, or her sister. Uh, uh, and they're so, you have, you'll have three and every one of them will have a complete different personality. And they have certain traits alike. And you know, what, where you mess up, you get that first one and they usually turn out pretty good and say, I got it. And, and then that second comes along and you think, now I did that with him and it didn't. And, and it worked, but it don't work with you. It, it's 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 mess. It's mess raising kids. And uh, I, I the, the, what what kids are being done, treated by today is hard to believe. I, I don't want to make make you nauseous, and I I don't even like to think about this. That that movie they made, whatever it was, Freedom, Sound of Freedom, whatever it was, about a year. I didn't even watch it. Uh, I told I told Carrie I said I'll watch it when it comes out on DVD and I still ain't I just can't always stomach I I can't sleep when I think about stuff like that. There are there are literally literally thousands and thousands and thousands of little kids I'm talking little below five and six years old being sold to perverts twenty times per day. They live in a bedroom and cry and scream from the pain. Toddlers, some of them two years old. They're videotaped and these shared are shared at 156 showers, shares per minute. 156 times per minute that's being shared around the world of that child being molested. That's what I'm talking about. And there's over 152,000 unaccompanied children that are coming to this country and they don't even know where they're at. Can't even be found. And I hate, I don't like to think about that. I hate to think about it. And if you're here this morning and you've got that child beside you and they're in Sunday school and they're learning about, oh, how thankful you ought to be. Oh, how you ought to get down and thank God that you've got your children with you and they're safe and, and have you. I mean, there are some of these children you hear about where they, they get abducted and they disappear at Walmart and they get down on days and go, man, I don't, I don't see how a parent lives through something like that. It's hard to imagine. But that is happening in our world today. Face reality, it's happening. And so with that in mind, I'm going to preach on what matters with kids. What matters with kids? People talk to them, well, uh, what you need to do with that kid, da 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 What you need to do with that kid is da-da-da-da-da. Uh, this, looks, be pretty, be successful, be talented, look good, get an education, play sports, brother. and the world just bombarding you day and night of what they feel like is important. I'm going to tell you this morning what really matters with kids. Uh, what really matters with kids. I love kids. You know, I love I love uh, kids. I I'm I'm very comfortable in a crowd full of kids, teenagers. I fit in there more than I do in a room full of preachers. I, I've always have been like that, and uh, I thank the Lord for it. We get we get emails or in letters or something all the time saying thank God for what your church does with kids. Thank God for what your church does with kids. Thank God for your church running buses and running those risks and paying all this money. You might, y'all y'all you, you just. Go by the junior church before you leave this morning. Just stick your head in there for a little bit. It is un, un, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So I want to give you, as Christian parents this morning, three little quick things on what really matters with your kids. Number one, it matters where you let them go. More than ever before, it matters where you let your kids go. You cannot just turn your kids loose. And just let them run anywhere they want to go, anytime they want to go. With it does matter where you let them go. I, I, you know, where I got in trouble where I first started hearing bad stuff in about the fourth grade on a school bus at a public school. That's why, and and I started hearing boys uh, use words. That was a long time ago, baby people. You think about what it is now. No, nobody had a phone on that bus back then. Nobody had access to the internet. Back then, on, on that bus, I was in the fourth grade, and I remember them older boys, and they just, they just said words I didn't know what it meant. And I remember thinking, my goodness, and it began to corrupt my mind. I'll never forget, uh, I went to a friend of mine's house, 
And uh, I was probably about 12 or 13. I'd never seen no, no kind of dirty magazine or nothing like that in my life. And he, he said, come in here. And we went out. And his daddy had had, back then, old men had old dirty books. And they'd pull them out from under the bed. First time I'd ever seen anything like that in my life. It scarred my mind. And it polluted Put pollution in my mind. And you know, the first time you see something that's filthy like that, the first time you see something perverted like that, that stuff sticks in you. And you say, well, Brother Danny, did your mother do? My mom done the best she could. She didn't have no choice. We didn't have Christian schools. We didn't have home school. Uh, wasn't no such thing that I knew of at that time. But I'm telling you, it matters where you let them kids go. It matters. It matters. And it don't take but a minute. For them to be around something. I remember boys that lived down the road, down, down Hoppy Tom. And, of course, we'd want to ride our bicycle. We'd ride the bicycle down there. Them boys were talking about every kind of filthy thing. I, I could imagine. I couldn't believe it. And I heard it. Always older boys. Uh, it's always a mistake to let your son, when he's little, go somewhere with a bunch of older boys. It's always a mistake to let your girl go somewhere with a bunch of older girls. I mean, that are not that are not Christian girls in a Christian environment. It does make a difference where they go. It does make a difference. I know they'll beg, Mama, I want to go here. Everybody in my class is going to the party, and I, I'll be the only one. They'll put a guilt trip on you. They'll, they'll make you feel, oh, you're so mean. How come? Why are you mean to me like this? But, Mama, Daddy, you've got to set your foot down and say, listen, I am not, you are not going. You are not going. They might get mad. That God didn't call you to be their best friend. God called you to be their mama and their, their daddy. And, and listen, you say, well, Brother Danny, they're, they're 14, they're 15, they're 16. Well, they're, now you say, you are eating my food, you are sleeping in my house, I'm putting food in your belly, we're paying the bills here. You are not going to go there. You got to sometimes. I don't mean be mean. I don't mean be overbearing. I don't, I, y'all know me. Good night, I'm the most level-headed person you ever met in your life, really. I am. I ain't much, but I am very level-headed. And I'm telling you, it makes a difference where you let them go. Makes a difference. Makes a difference. Uh, you say they'll use psychology on you. Everybody else is. That's not true. Some are. They'll say everybody hey, to make you feel guilty, to manipulate you into letting them do what they want to. And you got look. I know people that keep their dog locked up and won't let their dog get out in the neighborhood because it might get mixed in with some old mutt down the road somewhere and let their daughter run hog wild anywhere she wants to go anytime she wants to. Something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. You better make, it matters where you let them go. Number two, it matters who they go with. It matters who they go with. It matters who they go with. I, Lord, I remember hearing them boys cuss. I remember, seeing, like I said a minute ago, I, it matters where they go to a sleepover. When my girls was little, you know, uh, they want to have a bunch of friends over. Fine. We'll have a bunch of friends over. We'll, they'll be in our home. We'll, we'll control what they watch on TV. We'll control the atmosphere, what they do, where they go. And we'll control that. And, and you, you cannot, you cannot just say, uh, well, Mom, I'm going to a sleepover Friday night. Well, where is it? Well, it's with some girls at school. You can't do that no more. Not these days. You don't know what kind of pervert the stepdad in that home is where they're going. I know this makes you uncomfortable. I'm not trying to point nobody out or make nobody feel bad. But listen, you've got to be careful who you let them go with nowadays. It's true. It's true. I'm not overreactionary. I'm not... Oh, my goodness, he's just always negative. No, people, no. This, this is reality. It, it ain't like it used to be when everybody knowed each other and we all went to the same school and we all had the same value. It's not like that no more. I mean, one night I went to the movies. We went to the movies every Friday, every Friday night when I was, Saturday night when I was about 13 or 14. There wasn't nothing else to do with Marion. And we'd hitchhike home. And I can't believe Mom allowed that. She didn't like it. Uh, but she shouldn't. They shouldn't have let me do that. It's like you shouldn't let your kids watch movies that's got stuff in it that ain't right. You shouldn't let your kids watch movies where people are getting naked and cussing and drinking and pushing alcohol and that lifestyle. You can't do it. You say, well, Brother Danny, it's, I know it's there. You just can't do it. You, it does matter where they go and who they go with. And I remember I was at the movies one night 
these guys come by, and they said, uh, hey, Danny, where are you going? I said, we're trying to get a ride home. Y'all take They were all about drunk. And me and my buddy got in the back seat of that car. They took off from Marion, headed to Nebo, and they said, that one straight, straightest road in town, there for about a, almost a mile, coming down Highway 70, and that thing went up. They was up there laughing and cutting up, and that speed armor was going 80, 90, 100, 110. And I, and I was sitting in the back seat, and I thought, ah, uh, this ain't good. And I, I was about 14. And I remember thinking, this ain't good. This ain't good. And we went over that hill. We went over that little, you go them little humps like that. You almost go airborne, them old cars. They let me out at home that night. That night they went. Ran up there in the mountain above Mary and wrecked. I like to kill one of them. They stayed in the hospital for weeks. Just a few hours later. And it was not for my mom praying in the grace of God. I would have been in that car. Makes a difference. It matters. Well, you can't just lock them up in a box. There you go. There you go. Talking crazy. Has anybody heard me come up here and say lock them up in a box? Okay, shut up with that stupid reasoning. I don't, I don't believe you should lock them up. I did not say lock them up. I said it matters where they go and it matters who they go with. Don't be afraid to set your foot down once in a while. If I do, I'm afraid they'll rebel and I'll lose them. You done lost them. You done lost them. You done lost them. Listen. It does matter. It might matter. You know, I guess I get so frustrated with people. People saying, "Well, it's a different time, brother Danny, and we don't." How, how are you going to discipline a kid nowadays? What do you do to discipline a kid nowadays? Take something away from them. Make them not give them candy. Don't let them watch TV. Make them go to the room. Blah. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible does teach corporal punishment, spanking, in a nice way, in an appropriate way. And anybody who would abuse a child ought to go to jail. Anybody who's mean to a kid ought to be in prison. Amen. Anybody who takes advantage of a child ought to be in prison. Amen. But, but, let me read you some scripture, mamas. Do you believe the Bible? I don't know what you're doing here if you don't. You're crazier than I thought you was. Are you being made? Hey, look, look, listen to this. Proverbs 13, 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. A rod is like a little hickory switch, like that right there. Just like that right there. That will work when nothing else works. And there's never been a kid on this earth that didn't need a little switch it once in a while, except for Jesus Christ. Well, I just don't believe in that. Well, let me read you the Bible. Let me read you the Bible. If you know more than the Bible, have fun. I hope it turns out good for you. You know good for more than the Bible? I didn't write this. Proverbs 20 and verse 30. The wound, like a blueness of wound cleanses away evil. So do stripes the inward parts of the belly. Train up a child in the way it should go. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far. You know, every kid's got foolishness bound in them. Every one of them. <clears throat> but they'll challenge you. They'll challenge you to see how far they can push you. And if you say, now darling, now darling, now darling, now darling, now, okay. <laughs> That's why she's going to treat her husband one day. And that's why she's going to try to treat the cops one of these days. And it ain't going to work. Somebody, sometime, somewhere, has got their foot down and say, no. No. I, I tell Kelly, I say, you tell the kids yes every time you can. If they ask you something, say yes, if you can. But it is not wrong to tell a child no. It's not wrong to tell a child no. It's funny to me. It's amazing to me. How that they got to get up every morning. They got to get up every morning and get ready and brush their teeth. You're not going out of this house till you brush your teeth. I, I think the Bible is, is surely as important as brushing your teeth. Oh my goodness, I can't believe you said not brush your teeth. There you go again. Did anybody hear me say don't brush your teeth? I said the Bible is more important than brushing your teeth. Did you hear me? Don't bounce back the other way and say, well, Brother Danny said it didn't matter if I can say they're ABCs as long as they go to church. I didn't say that. I said, you're, you're not the right kind of parent if you'll make them learn their homework and at 11 o'clock at night to get that test right but won't let them run their Bible verse for Sunday school. That's what I said. 
Need me to say it again? You're not not the right kind of parent if you think that homework more important than learning that book right there. That's what I said. Go back and listen to it over and over and over now so you can get it. Proverbs 23, 13. Withhold not correction from the child. Uh, uh, when, he, when thou shalt beat him with a rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt deliver his soul from hell. What the Bible said. Proverbs 29, 15. Correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. For you that have kids. Pass this on to you. The little boy's first Bible is the greatest thrill he's known. There's a sweet, unique excitement in a Bible all of his own. And yet my heart is smitten, and thus the touching sight I see. Has his reverence for the Bible depended on me? As I see him with his Bible, I bow my head and pray. May he always love that Bible the way he does today. Then I hear a voice within me speaking solemn words and true. How he cherishes that Bible will depend a lot on you. I love my Bible better since I've seen the beaming joy this wonderful possession has brought to my little boy. May I seek to give mine daily a devotion he can see for the love he bears his Bible will depend a lot on me. It matters. It matters. It matters who they go with. If you don't control a child, they will control you. If you don't control a child, that child will control you. Amen? A doctor said that a well-disciplined, well-trained child has a four times possibility of making it through an illness than one that's not. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what a professional uh, child doctor said. It matters. Lastly, and I'm through this morning, it matters what they see and what they do. People say, you're too strict. You're too strict. Let me just pass a little bit of information on to you. The TV or the phone is not your babysitter. You can say, well, I want to sleep three or four hours. Here, go in there and watch TV. Or I, mommy don't want to get up. Mama's more concerned about her career than she is her child. And let me say this to you all mamas. Look, y'all mamas, they ain't going to be little very long at all. Man, you turn around. They're eight, nine, ten. You turn around, they're in high school. You know, they're going to be little just a very short time. You better slow down and you better take time. I, I got Frankie up the other morning. He's six years old. I said, Frankie, I said, Frankie, what did God do? Who was the first person he made? Adam and Eve. Frankie, did Adam and Eve have a good life? Yes. What did they do? They sinned. Frankie, what did they do? You said, oh, you're brainwashed them. Yeah, yeah, like y'all do with that math and that history book for hours. Every, that, you, yeah, and we're brainwashing them because we teach them a Bible verse. Don't let the spirit of the devil making you think stuff like that. Amen. Amen, people. Look, good night in the morning, y'all. Uh, yeah, in a Bible verse, they're 15, they're 16, they're 17, and they don't know anything about it. Listen, you... Take them to camp meetings. Take them to revival meetings. Get them in this youth meeting. Get them in there. Get them in there. Get them in there. You'll you'll drive out of your way to get them in every school event in the world. And there's nothing wrong with some of that. But people, what about God? If you don't get it in them, you'll pay a price one of these days. They cannot. Your kid, your teenagers cannot watch Little Nas, Taylor Swift, Eminem, and remain morally pure. Cannot be done. But she likes it. Well, I don't. You don't. Turn it off. But they'll rebel. They done did. You done got a mess. If she's fighting you, if they're fighting you, you've already almost lost them. I feel some very, very negative vibes coming off of y'all this morning. What if your kid was six, eight years old I was out in the yard, and there was a copperhead, and they was out there playing with it. Would you say, well, if I force them to leave them alone, I just don't know if I should force them to stay away from it. They're going to have to learn someday. You ain't, you ain't that dumb. Now, rap music's a lot more dangerous than the copperhead. It fills their mind with fornication. 
sexual stuff. It does. Am I, am I wrong? I mean, I can, you can prove that any day of the week. You want to get up here and read the lyrics? We can't. They're so dirty. You see them parents go to them parents' meeting about the school, and they start reading one of the school books, and the, and the, the authorities stop them and say, no, you can't read that in here. But they let the kids read in the library? That's how messed up this world is, y'all. You ain't going to let them play the copperhead. They'd be better off with a rattlesnake in their bedroom than they would be that internet without you controlling it. You better check that phone. You better check that phone regularly and figure out a way where they can't figure out a way to fool you. You got to stay ahead of them like the cops. You fuss at them to take a shower. If they got a dentist appointment, oh, they're going to be there. If they got a Sunday school appointment, oh, it don't matter if they go or not. I pray all you think about their body and not their soul. It does matter. It matters. It matters. After 30 years, 35 years of age, your chances of being saved are 1 in 50,000. After 45 years of age, your chances of being saved, one in 300,000. After 75, one in 700,000 chances of being saved. Let the boys be boys. Let them get dirty. Let them get their fingers in the dirt. Let them get, them, get their mouth busted once in a while. Let the girls be little girls. You better, you better listen to me. The world's trying to pervert every single one of them. And it will. It will. It will, I'm telling you. It, it'll pervert them. Years ago, I told you this story a bunch of times. I, it just comes to my mind every time. Girl lived down below us, wasn't kin to us, but she lived down below us in a trailer. You had to go down my driveway, and you go down there, so you couldn't actually see her trailer from the house, but it's about eighth of a mile. And she's worked third shift, got it in the middle of the day. She's 19 years old. She called me one day and she said, Danny, 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 can you come down here? Can you come down here, please? I said, what in the world that is wrong? I said, you all right? She said, please, please. She said, I said, what? She said, there's a mouse. There's a mouse. I said, I right, ain't going to hurt you. She said, no. Will you come down here and kill it? You come down here and kill it. I said, all right, all right. I walked down the hill, down my driveway. As far as here, the bus out yonder. Down there, knocked on the door. She was like this on the, on the couch. 19 years old. Look <laughs> okay. at I said, where's it at? She said, I don't know. I don't know. So I, I got the broom, and, and I started I started going around like that, and I'd stick it under the couch, and I'd, in the closet. And I, about that time, that, it went across me. She went, ah! It, and I took the broom and went, bam! Bam! Started beating it. And I hit it, and it, it didn't die, but it was laying there going like this. <laughs> and, I said, and so I opened the front door and just swept it out in the yard. She went, huh, 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 thank you, thank you. I said, all right, I'll see you later, Debbie. I went up the hill, and while I was walking back up the driveway, I, my mind was in the Word of God, and I thought therein, and whereby, and wherewithal, and received instruction under the sun, like Solomon did. And I thought, huh, I've seen that same girl like I had this big old Camaro. He had that thing that jacked up in the back. Back then, they jacked back like right there. Look, it's going downhill everywhere he went. He'd pull up in that yard and blow that horn. Beep, rawr, rawr, and she would get out of that house and go get in the car. Of her own free will. And I was just shaking my head. Hmm. She's screaming a mouse. Get in a car with a wolf. Thank you, sir. <laughs> One person in here got some sense. Look, y'all. You don't want kids around a rat. You better watch who you let them go out with. Where they go. Who they, quote, date. I'm telling you, we're living in time. We're living in time. It does matter. It does matter.
You don't let them listen to songs that encourage premarital sex, drugs, or alcohol. Don't listen to them. Not going to listen to their music in their house or watch movies that encourage that kind of life. Is that somebody, please, when I get through, come up and say, Danny, that is wrong. I can show you in the Bible where you're supposed to let your kids listen to anything they want to. And show, somebody, I'll come next Sunday morning and preach off a sermon you ever heard on how wrong I've been. But you know it ain't wrong, and you know good and well what we got to do. We got we to you gotta make some kind of boundaries somewhere, people. And say, look, look, we're trying to raise you up for God. And you say, well, what if they rebel? If they, if they do, they do. I don't know what to tell you. But he said, we're not going to let your children Teach our children to serve other gods. Not going to do it. Call me self-righteous. Call me holier than that. Call me whatever you want to. We're going to teach our God, kids to worship God of the Bible and the church in the right way. And if they lose a friend because of it, it wasn't a friend to start with. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Never head bowed, never eye closed. Miss Destiny come and play something softly this morning. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed today. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. Every parent in this room today. If you can and will. You want to get out of your seat. Meet me here in this altar this morning. We need all the help we can get y'all. I need it. I ain't no perfect parent. God knows I need all the help I can get. Let's get in this altar this morning and say Lord. For my kids. For my grandkids. For my boys, for my kids. Lord God, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, maybe we've already failed and we've made mistakes and we're going to start all over this morning. And Lord, we're going to do better and we're going to do the right thing. Amen. Amen. We're going to do the right thing. We're going to do the right thing. Maybe you're here this morning as a parent. You say, Preacher, the only way I can be the right kind of parent is to be a biblical parent, what the Bible says. I'm going to raise my kids. According to what the Bible says, I can't improve on that. I can't, there's no book, there's no course, there's no class, there's no seminar you can go to that's going to improve on what the Bible says about raising kids. God help us this morning. Lord, as we enter into this youth rally time and fasting time and youth services and all the emphasis on the youth in the next few weeks, God help us this morning. God help us this morning. Father, I pray right now. You bless every person here in this altar this morning. Holy Ghost, come down and do a great and mighty work here today. Lord, I pray that every one of us will, will have a desire to live for you and serve you. Do the right thing, God. And bless this service uh, this evening, Lord. It's coming up. And God, get a hold of all of our teenagers and our young people. God, set them on fire. Lord, I know it's hard for them, Lord. And I know it's tough being a parent now. And, and they're pulled so many different ways. God, I, I know that, God. And I pray for grace and mercy. And God, give us wisdom to know where to draw the line and know when to say no. And God, to know what to do. God, help us, Lord. We need help, all of us, God. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you do. Bless our church. Oh, God, give us a gang of young people that desire you and serve you. Do right. Have your way in our hearts this, this morning, Lord. God, do what ought to be done in our life. Get us ready for tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Some still praying this morning. Some still praying this morning. Some still praying. We'll wait. I know what it's like being a parent. I ain't been a perfect parent. By no means. You can ask my girls. I'm not been a perfect parent. I want to be. I try. I made a lot of mistakes. But I want to try to do better as a parent. I want to try to do better. That will be our goal, our desire. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Heart's clear. All right. Ladies, uh, if you don't mind, bring a little dessert this evening. It would start at 5 o'clock on the dot, not two after. 5 o'clock on the dot this evening. God willing, uh, it's going to be full. The choir is going to be full. You're going to get a little bit of taste of youth rally tonight at 5 o'clock. So don't miss it. Come praying. Go get you some teenagers. You know, all you teenagers that are here, bring your friends. Call them up and say, go to church with me tonight. You'll enjoy it, okay? All right, let's be dismissed for prayer. After this, fellowship a little bit, and uh, we'll go. But Joey, how about praying for us?